Hi everyone, it is November 14. I want to pass along an interview on the Fullerton Informer. And this interview, I hope that you circulate it. It is an interview with a woman who lost her home in paradise, who clearly is quite awake to what is taking place. She talks about the directed energy weapons and what she has to say, there are some things that are very important, need to be heard by everybody that has an open mind. But one thing that really was very loud and clear to me is that she believes that they, they hit the perimeter of paradise so that people couldn't escape. She, as well as myself and many others, believe the numbers that have died in this fire are, oh God, you know, wow, man, things are really not okay with a whole lot of people. And if I just simply say the cats here are really causing me an awful lot of stress, it sounds like, well, it's nothing. But when you pile on, when you pile on an overload of stressful uh, events that are taking place in just one person's life, it's very, very hard. And that is what a lot of Americans are now experiencing. Yeah, um, I, the, the, the very strange thing that I have noticed about Americans, they don't respond appropriately to tragedy, tragedy. It's kind of like a oh hum. Or it's a, oh, what a shame. And it's gone within seconds and people just get back into their life. And without an appropriate response, then people do not take appropriate action. Boy, do we need to change here in our country. We really do need to change. I've said this for seven years. I get almost no responses when I say things like that, that we need to change, that we really need to work hard to establish trust in our relationships, in our communities, and so that it filters out into the greater society we need to do the work necessary to get to that place of generative care, genuine compassion. Otherwise, you just think you're compassionate and caring when really just looking at how so many people live their life, you know they're not because people demonstrate what they care about by the actions that they take in their daily life. Um, we have a lot of Americans who are really hurting just this past year. I have shown over and over again all the people suffering the floods, all the people suffering the fires, um, people getting mean and cold and not caring, people doing things to one another that is just, well, clearly demonstrating that people care only about their own life. And until something happens to you, 
Do we really have to constantly wait until it happens to you? And I'm not talking about you, who, but I'm talking about the general you. We have so much information that we are going down. We are at war. We have so much information, the evidence, the facts, that people are being taken out deliberately. We've got so much information that weather is being used as a weapon. Fire is being used as a weapon. The directed energy weapons that are being used to destroy homes in California. And yet, what I've noticed that even in the awake crowd there are so many that are oh boy what a shame and then just moving on to the next event this has we um and I know that people get pissed when I say this it's not to get you pissed it's to get you thinking trying to get you thinking about okay how can you help? How can you help these people? To try to get people motivated to do the work necessary to change. And to try to get people to motiv motivated to, to really understand the magnitude of what has happened in this country. We do not have a great economy. We have a piss poor economy. You are hearing lie after lie after lie after lie after lie. Americans more every single day are hurting financially, living paycheck to paycheck. The elderly are getting screwed. And when I come across, when I come across, emails like this. I get fully and I have said for years people can't recover from these events because they have already experienced financial ruin due to the manipulation of this economy. They're living paycheck to paycheck. Many can't pay their bills. So when you have an event like this, how do people recover? And then you see friends and family betraying those who need the help. I'm not saying that it's everyone. I am saying that I believe it's most, most. Because we have this idea that, well, if you go down, it's that person's fault. Bullshit. There are so many external factors that people do not see, understand these external factors that are destroying people. Unless you've experienced it, you probably don't see it all of the external factors that keep one down. And the biggest external factor is family and friends not helping their own in need. Communities destroyed. And that's why it is essential for every one of us to be very aware of how we operate in our own communities so that we don't contribute to the breakdown in trust. I understand that it's very hard because we have so many in our communities all over the place who don't give a shit about anybody and they are acting in ways, acting with a uh, <laughs> They're, it's like people aren't restrained anymore. They act immorally. They act as if they don't care. 
They lie, manipulate, gaslight, and attack. And some people actually like to cause misery for other people. This is very real. This is really happening. And then we have so many that just believe, well, whatever happens to you, it's your fault. It's, well, you don't have to get upset. Something's wrong with you if you get upset. That is such bullshit. We are relational beings. It matters how we treat one another. And if we treat one another poorly, badly, in a way that hurts one another, it hurts. And some, because of the evil that has taken out their life, they get stuck in that, literally stuck. But then we have so many who say, well, you like misery. You're lazy. You want people to take care of you. You want the. It's like, oh, stop already. Stop. And really try to see clearly what is taking place in people's lives. You want to believe the lies? And so many Americans really love lies. They don't want to come out of it because if they do come out of it, it means they will have to change. Well, I'm not going to change. I'm too comfortable. I don't want to be inconvenienced. Oh, yeah, I'm caring and compassionate. Just don't ask me to help anybody. I'll lend an ear for a half hour to listen to somebody. But that's the extent of it. For an awful lot of Americans, we would not be living this nightmare. We would not have millions upon millions of Americans suffering if Americans genuinely cared and were compassionate. Because that the genuineness compels people to take action. They want to try to reduce the suffering, to heal the suffering, most people just ignore it and go on. They think good about themselves, but what they demonstrate is the opposite of that. This email from a subscriber in Chico talking about the smart meters, in the interview, that the Fullerton Informer does on that channel with the woman who lost everything, they talk about the smart meters. They talk about the transformers, the surges of electricity that can take out homes. Smart meters, they can make them explode and cause homes to burn up. But it's not just the smart meters. It's not just the transformers. It's not just the directed energy weapons, though these directed energy weapons, it could be just that because they are so destructive and powerful beyond comprehension. It's the chemtrailing and all of the ingredients that they use to spray into the atmosphere that is incendiary. It's the microwave, the scalar weapons that they can use to create high winds and then they just call it Santa Ana winds. We are being taken out. It is obvious now we are at war and we've got a lot of awake people who are just going about their business. Some of us were willing to pay the 75 removal fee and $10 uh, extra a month for three to four years. Most didn't, either because of the expense or 
because they thought we were nuts, but some in paradise may have opted out. We have at least a dozen friends, her husband's brother and sister-in-law, two of their employees that lost everything. It's an older population, so most won't live long enough to enjoy what remains of their lives, Carol. Now, there are two elderly sisters we are trying with others to find. And yes, the death toll will eventually be devastating. The sons of bitches that did, did this need to have a swift trial. And when found guilty, swing by the neck until dead. The pain, the sorrow, the emptiness is almost unbearable on the survivors. You don't have to tell me. Because I know it. And I live. I live the pain. I live the sorrow. I live the emptiness. I am not saying this for your sympathy. I am saying that we need to listen to one another and stop this knee-jerk judging because all of the judgments are simply about you remaining comfortable in your own life not not you having to do anything to help anybody. It allows you to justify your not helping anybody. And we have got to help people. We have to help people. We have to open our hearts. We've got to open our homes. We have to open our pocketbooks. We have to open our minds to get what is going on. And we've got to finally live the principles that we speak. And Unfortunately, there's an awful lot of awake people who don't get it until something happens in their neck of the woods. And that has to change. We've got to learn from experience, not just personal experience. We have to learn from one another. You've got to listen to people who have been destroyed. You have to listen to people who have lost everything, who understand what is taking place. This woman who's interviewed on in, uh, uh, the Fullerton Informer California Fire Victim speaks out. What she is speaking is what took place in her area in paradise before the fire, during the fire, that they set or hit with directed energy weapons the perimeter of paradise so that people could not get out. They are killing people. These are unconventional weapons and in war they kill people. They destroy infrastructure. And you know, you, you would get it if it was a bomb. You would feel more compassion for people if it was a bomb. And if you do feel genuine compassion and caring and try to help others, I'm not talking to you. So for all of those who, when I've spoken like this and people leave comments attacking me for what I say, I'm sorry, it demonstrates that you have taken personally what I have said you can't think about 
what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that I'm great and that you need... Look, I'm not the only one saying these things. But when you personally attack somebody, it just means that you have a low consciousness and you're about yourself. And you don't want to hear something. It's clear that it triggers something in you. And we've got to stop. We've got to start really thinking about what people are saying. Otherwise, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Just getting information for the sake of the information? Getting information? Maybe you're, you know, realizing, okay, things are getting bad, so I, maybe I need to prep a little bit more for me. What are we doing here? My God. Can we not think outside the box to try to help one another? You know, and the basis is trust. That is the foundation of everything, trust. And we've got Americans lying all the time, lying to themselves, about how wonderful they are, outright lying to one another, betraying close friends, betraying each other in families. The only way that any all of this can stop is if we do what's necessary. We individually, individually, make the changes to bring back trust in relationship because that's the starting point of everything healthy <sighs> look it's very hard to live with nothing you're stressed out all the time. The emotions are all over the place. And then you face an awful lot of people who haven't lost anything. And it's very hard because a lot of those who haven't lost anything do judge you especially when you can't get back on your feet. Do you think these elderly people are going to get back on their feet? There's a new fire. San Bernardino County. The high winds, the relentless high winds, Santa Ana winds. It went from 2 to 20 acres in size Fire continues to grow to the south under an influence of Santa Ana winds. No evacuations are in place yet. Uh, San Bernardino now. Fire after fire after fire after fire after fire. So many anomalies, and we've got people who just will never give up listening to the government officials and mainstream media reporters. If you don't think that these people need to be put in their place, shamed to the point that they shame you, then you're just scared of confrontation. We are at war. People are losing everything. People are losing their loved ones. People are dying. These are directed energy weapons, targeted hits, elderly people, animals dying. And the appropriate response is to begin to see who the enemy is. And that enemy 
happens to be the people in your life that continually insult you for trying to educate them. So now the death toll, the campfire, 48 people died. Butte County is 130 acres. It's now 35% contained, 7,600 homes, 260 commercial buildings, 48 people dead. Uh-uh. There's going to be an awful lot more. And what that woman said in the interview with Joe, the uh, Fullerton informer, she said, she knows that so many more people have died, but mainstream media, they report just enough information to keep the drama going, to keep the entertainment going, but they don't give the information that would beg questions. Would it beg questions? Hundreds of people died? Frankly, I don't even think that would beg questions because Americans have been not the people they speak, they are, they live, well, this kind of narcissistic delusion of thinking they're great when they're not. Would they care that hundreds of people died? Most, I don't believe, would. Oh, they would say they would. But you can see what people care about. Just look at how they live. And yes, you are talking to somebody who has experienced a lot of that. People, oh, I care, I care, when clearly they don't. And who has, in the seven years of of doing this on YouTube. In the beginning, I had most, I don't even remember a subscriber who was hurting. But I got a lot of judgment from them as I was trying everything that I possibly could to get back my life. Well, now so many subscribers have suffered the consequences. And I have heard from so many subscribers, their friends and their family were not there for them. And it was a betrayal. It was a shock that only added to the loss. Because it's a real loss when you get, oh my God. I don't even have people in my life that will help me. My family clearly doesn't care about me. My friends clearly do not care about me. So what's going on? We've got to finally admit that we are not the people that we have glorified ourselves to be. You cannot get anywhere without facing the real hard truth about your own self. We will never get anywhere when we permit people to lie, to live a lie, to act in ways that we clearly know is immoral, immature, stupid. And unfortunately, for those of us who are quote unquote awake and get the importance of Americans climbing out of their low grade self you get you get attacked a lot you get attacked a lot 
because people really are very lazy. They're, they are truly about themselves. They don't want to change. And, you know, I got this link from a subscriber. And I will link below to everything, but uh, it's Tina Mushi. I don't know. Mo I don't. I don't know how to pronounce your name. I'm sorry, but I have to say, looking at this Twitter page, I like her. Um, there's many more people who are awake that we just don't know about. But listen to this: when a toxic person can no longer control you. They will try to control how others see you. Instead of changing themselves, they will then go about making sure that other people see you in a way that is not the truth. How many people have I had in my life that do this? They will try to control how others see you. The misinformation will feel unfair, but stay above it, trusting that other people will eventually see the truth, just like you did. The only way that you can see the truth is if you know the truth about yourself. That's the only way. And most Americans don't even know the truth about themselves. So that's why we have so many people who are so easily manipulated to believe lie after lie after lie coming from other people because they all do it so they all support one another in that behavior the other um, there, there's actually a lot of good stuff on this Twitter page so the other thing is um, the California high-speed rail system in the same path fires line up exactly in the same path of this rail system and a plain truth has posted videos on this yes fires destroying areas of the country that they want people no longer living in, get into those mega regions, reshaping the country into 10, 11 mega regions so that they will have complete and utter control over all of the people living in the mega region. I'm sorry for going on. I absolutely believe 100% that those of us who are talking about the importance of looking at the truth about our own life, I believe 100% that that is the only way that we can ever get to change anything. If you remain the same, you will never be a part of the solution. You will manifest nothing. You will go about your business doing the exact same thing over and over and over again every single day until you die. The only way that we can manifest change is for the individual, of course, in the aggregate, to change themselves. We hear many people, I read some comments and I think, wow, you know, the awake, there's an arrogance in so many. And I, I will admit, I thought about my own arrogance and thinking, okay, so... I understand what's going on and I did a lot of research and and there was in the beginning an arrogance with me I thought that I was smarter or maybe better 
Get rid of that. The awake really are no different than the sleeping sheeple. Because we're not doing anything. We haven't been able to do anything. We attack one another. We break down trust. We never think about how we can help one another, thinking outside the box, trying to come together, trying to organize, trying to, you know, We just watch destruction over and over and over again. And we can't seem to do anything differently. And it's too late when your life gets destroyed. Because it's so hard to just keep going you try to recover what you have personally lost at the same time trying to fight what's happening to us collectively. And you get you get attacked by the sleeping sheeple but you also get attacked by the awake people. And it you keep going, you keep going, you keep going. But there's only so much that you can draw from inside. Oh yeah, the Christians will say, well, you know, if you just allow Christ and the Holy Spirit to change you, don't do that. Don't. Because so many Christians use that Christianity to justify your own inability or your own laziness. You won't change. You won't help anybody. And that is the truth. Most Christians, uh-uh, they're not about Christ. They're, they too are about living a delusion. Because my God, if we had even the majority of Christians who were genuine Christians really trying to live as Christ lived. Oh, of course we're not talking perfection, but we try, which means giving up the lie, which means stripping yourself of your ego, which means giving up living for you and your own little life and really extending yourself to try to reduce and heal the suffering. And I don't care. You can argue with me all you want. You ain't going to make me move from that position. You know, yeah, I get very frustrated seeing nothing change, but only seeing more and more people have to, having to suffer. You, know, you, you talk about communities, and this is a story really about communities. We're in Cherokee, and this is the Cherokee Volunteers Company 67 volunteer firefighters. Now, the people in this community have been asked to leave, although not everyone did. The, the folks right across the street, for example, are still here. But you think about how many tens of thousands have either lost their home or been displaced by this fire. Where do they all go? Well, that is, that is proving to be quite a challenge. Uh, so we finally made it to Oroville and uh, stayed a night at somebody's house that we didn't even know. And then we got uh, reservations here in Marysville. We land here because we went to a evacuation center first and um, it, was, it was horrible. So we looked for a motel. This was the closest motel that we could find. I feel like if you're here, you were lucky to get a hotel room. Oh, no, we were. We were in Chico. 
at first, and then everything in Chico is booked. So we had to leave Chico today to come here. There's 30 to 50,000 people up there, and we all have to go someplace. Uh, now, what I, I didn't mention there, and we talked a little bit about this last night, is the number of people who don't have a room because you can't get one, or they don't have a room because they maybe can't afford one. And there are people in cars all over the place here, in in the parking lots outside of hotels, and you know, go to like a, a Walmart or something. There are people just kind of huddled together in groups in two or three cars, just sort of riding this out day to day with nowhere to go. And, and you know, and as we get to sort of day six of this, uh, you can you can feel that the patients kind of kind of waning and the fatigue growing uh, you know not a lot of answers for this uh, as, as just the disaster unfolds just like we saw you know 13 months ago now in the wine country so we're live in Cherokee in Butte County Wilson Walker KPI X5 that is so hard to hear Wilson we hope those people get the help they need very quickly all right and now you're going to hear something that you should not do Thank you. We just heard from uh, some of those who have been affected by these fires. Uh, even if you don't live close to where these fires are happening, there are many ways that you can help out the victims. Yeah, making sure you're helping in a productive way is key, though. And Jackie Ward shares some organizations that you can trust providing aid directly to the victims of the fire. Yeah, this is the least we can do right here in the Bay Area. While a lot of relief efforts are already in motion in Butte County, there are certain ways to give support that are more helpful than others. The American Red Cross says that donating... No. You do not give to the American Red Cross. And this is where trust has to <laughs> come into play. Um, we need to trust one another. In the communities that have been hit hard, suffering the consequences of this war, we need to find people that we trust and donate to them even donating to any organization is hard now because we know the money doesn't get to those who need it. Now, Google and Red Cross, they've already managed to pull in millions of dollars from these fires. That money should be going to the survivors so that they can get a hotel room you don't see that money going to them. Enough, Americans, with the bullshit. How many people have I tried to get it across to that American Red Cross is not helping anybody? FEMA does not help people. Oh, they give them, you know, they have to give some people just enough. Not, oh, they don't get back on their feet. But they've got to give out something, right? But most of the money they keep. I am so done with all of the bullshit in this country. So if we had people in communities, if we had a network of people that we trusted, We could be donating to them. They could be helping people because they would be on the ground. How can we get that? You know, after Harvey and another subscriber I really care about, she having her home flooded from the Army Corps of Engineers. I remember I was walking around, walking the track, going round in circles, round in circles, thinking, okay, what can we possibly do? Um, and I thought, all right, just a simple website where people could just donate whatever it is that they have, but a dollar, just, and then have people circulate, you know, just donate a dollar to tell your friends and family and so that we could have some funds to help those in this community.
I actually got really motivated. I was thinking, okay, about that website. And there were people who emailed me, I think two, who said, if you really do want to do this website, then let me know. I know how to, you know, create websites. And I kept thinking, okay, I've got to get in touch with them. And I thought of, you know, just a few things. It was as if my mind was clear for I got motivation back. I felt inspired. And it was the first time that I actually felt excited to get back to my apartment so that I could begin to work on it. Something happened. When I got back, it was as if everything that I was feeling, like only an hour before, was gone. And it has been gone ever since. It was as if, I'm not kidding, like something took over inside me and my motivation, uh, feeling inspired, forget it. Um, but I couldn't think clearly. I could not think clearly. Could not think clearly. And ever since, I have just gotten worse have experienced more betrayal from people, experienced something so painful coming from someone else that I am still shell-shocked, but experiencing more and more of me kind of vanishing. My trying very hard to hold on to it and all that kind of stuff. I couldn't get it together. But then when I would post videos trying to help those subscribers, yeah, I got very few donations. Then of course, attacked as being a e-beggar, a scammer, um, No, the awake crowd, most don't help. We don't support one another. We don't rally around those who get in trouble. Chris Haskell and so many others. So few. Actually support. And that support does come from money. When you live, uh, you know, in South Carolina and somebody is having to put the legal bill to defend themselves against the authorities who have come to attack them because of their activism and all of the activism from every person is not just about them, but it's about you. You benefit from every person who takes action. But so many can't even give a dollar. Yeah, we need to change. We need to change. We need to sacrifice. You have to sacrifice. You've got to sacrifice time. You gotta sacrifice money. You gotta sacrifice some comfort. Maybe sacrifice, you know, that Starbucks coffee to help somebody. You sacrifice. And it's hard, but it's gotta be done. It has to be done. I'm sorry my videos are long. At this point, I almost feel like 
saying, who cares? So what? They're long. Yeah, we, we still have these people. If you could just do a two-minute video, people don't have time. Fuck you. Control freaks out there. Well, my family won't listen to anything that's over, you know, three minutes. Too bad for them. You want to lift people up. Not hold them in the same low place that they are. If people have an attention span of a gnat, then don't capitulate to their demands. Tell them there's something wrong with them. And if they're at that point, even a two-minute video is not going to do much of anything. And what is what has been really heartbreaking for me in these seven years is the most important videos that I have posted, which is about the work that the individual needs to do to change, hardly anybody responds. There's no response. The real heartbreaking videos have been when subscribers have gone down and seeing how few care enough to donate to help them. So yeah, this community also needs to change. And if we don't do that, then we're just about using truth as our entertainment. No different than the sleeping sheeple. All links are below.